Hello guys, welcome back to Food Dojo. It's day two of our Kyoto trip and it's currently 6 a.m. in the morning. I'm starting my day with a run around the beautiful downtown area and right now I'm at Kamo River. I have to say, running along Kamo River in the morning was a really peaceful experience. The surroundings were so quiet and calm, which made for a really pleasant start to the day. As I was running, I even spotted a gray heron. After the run, I went back to my hotel and had breakfast at Senga Ono Kyoto Chikaiji, which is a restaurant that exudes a strong Japanese aesthetic. Located within the temple hotel created through a collaboration with the historic Chikaiji Temple, which has over 500 years of history. This restaurant has been recognized in the Michelin Guide and is the second branch of Fukuoka's Senga Ono Aishun to open outside of the prefecture. At Senga Ono Kyoto Chikaiji, you can savor the unique characteristics of each season with a breakfast that truly represents the essence of Japan. It's an experience that invites you to appreciate the finer details of Japanese culture and cuisine. On the menu at this restaurant, you'll have a choice of four different main dishes to choose from. These options include Shen Senga Chirishi, which is served with 20 different seasonal vegetables, Kamao, made with sea bream and tempera, and Shorin featuring eel and great burdock served in an egg-bound soup or with steamed turnips. No matter which dish you choose, you will also receive a serving of wakeful green tea, chaiwan meshi with soba, colorful hassan, and grilled fish of the day. Additionally, the hotel takes great care in preparing their rice. They order brown rice from Tanba, Kyoto, and polish it fresh each day in the restaurant using a traditional kama pot called a hagama, and you can ask to refill as much as you like. We went with Senga Chirishi and mixed tempura with vegetables and sea bream. Overall, the Japanese-style breakfast at this hotel was a wonderful way to start the day. If you're staying at this hotel, I highly recommend trying it out for yourself. For more details, please check out our full review of the hotel. At the checkout, we decided to use the baggage service which sends your bag to the Kyoto Station Hotel. I'm glad they have this service because we didn't want to carry our bags when sightseeing. Also, this service comes with free lounge access at the hotel which I will get to you later in the video. Now, let's go explore Kyoto. Today, we plan to visit the Arashiyama area and started with the Hidden Gem Temple which is about a 40-minute train ride or an hour away from Kyoto Station by bus. We took the train, but if you don't like walking, recommend taking the bus because it's more easy to understand with the train, we had to walk like 15 minutes from the station. On the other hand, if you are fond of strolling and relishing the landscape and wildlife, walking is the way to go. We also stumbled upon the meat vending machine. I was surprised by the variety of options it offered, from roast pork to horse meat and all kind of beef including premium omi beef and wagyu from 1,000 to 3,000 yen. To reach the temple with bus, you can take either bus number 73 or 83, which depart from bus stop C6 at Kyoto Station for 270 yen. After following Hendren and Signs and climbing a gentle slope, I arrived at the temple's entrance. However, there was still a short way to go. There are 80 stairs to climb in total, which is said to be the same number of steps to heaven. Simply climbing up the stairs step by step is apparently the first step towards finding inner peace. In other words, one should not complain while climbing the hill. This is our first stop of the day. Kagenji, also known as Suzumashidera or Cricket Temple. Unfortunately, we had to queue up to enter because of the holiday season. The entrance fee is 500 yen, and each session starts every 50 minutes so make sure you have enough time to attend. Suzumashidera is a Buddhist temple located in the Irishiyama area of Kyoto. It is a hidden gem often overlooked by foreign tourists, but popular among Japanese visitors who come to hear the crickets chirping. The temple's founder, a hardworking priest, bred crickets and made modifications to the temple to create a warm environment for them to thrive and chirp year-round. In addition, this temple is famous for bringing couples together and it has a Jizo statue located in the sanctuary. This is uncommon since Jizo statues are usually found by the roadside or next to graves. However, the Suzumashi Temple's Kafuku Jizo is worshipped for granting wishes although visitors are allowed to make only one wish. The statue wears Werichi straw sandals on its feet and is believed that the Jizo will visit those who recite their address. It's crucial to remember your home address otherwise. The Jizo won't be able to locate you where your wish won't be granted. The temple maintains a warm temperature to keep the crickets chirping, making it a comfortable place to visit even in the winter. However, due to its location and difficulty in access, 
it may not be a priority for first-time visitors to Kyoto. This is where you can make your wish beside the entrance after the session ends. We left the temple and since it was already lunchtime, we took a bus to the main area of Arashiyama. Currently I am at the iconic Tajisukawa Bridge which spans the Katsu River and is a well-known landmark of Arashiyama. It was constructed during the mid-17th century and has a graceful and attractive curved design. The bridge offers spectacular views of the river and the mountains, with its colors changing during autumn. In addition, you can opt for a houseboat which costs 2,300 yen or a self-paddling boat which costs 1,800 yen for the entire boat. Fun fact, the bridge's name literally translates to Moon Crossing Bridge. This is because the bridge's curved shape resembles the crescent moon in the night sky. Our next destination is Shirayan, where we plan to have our meal. The restaurant is located within the forested area of Arashiyama, near the mountain's edge. There are several ways to reach the restaurant, but we chose the simplest one, which involved walking along the riverside from the bridge. When you come across an intersection, there will be signs, written in Japanese indicating that you need to climb up stone steps to reach the restaurant. Formerly, Shirayan was a vacation home for a former prime minister. Maybe that's why it's very hard to get there. When I opened the main door, I was welcomed with a lovely smile by the greeting staff. Inside are only two private rooms and four table seatings. Tofu is one of Kyoto's specialities. Shirayan is a restaurant that specializes in tofu kaiseki cuisine, offering visitors the opportunity to relish in the breathtaking views that change with each of the four seasons. During autumn, the restaurant is in high demand, so it's strongly recommended to book a reservation beforehand if you wish to dine here. There are four different menus to choose for their lunch kaiseki pricing from 4,180 yen to 6,380 yen for the most expensive one which comes with wagyu beef. We choose to go with the cheapest and the second cheapest one because it was our last day and we didn't have much time. This is our appetizer tofu with salt and umeshu which is a fruity liquor made from unripened Japanese plums. The next dish is called hasamori, contained a variety of specialties, including sesame tofu, pan with fig, boiled octopus, wheat gluten, mackerel, shrimp, yuba wrap, dumplings, simmered winter melon, conger eel, namafu, and tofu. My favorite was the sesame tofu. We also had this in our breakfast, but the consistency and the texture was very different. I could tell that they specialize in tofu. Next two dishes are only for the second cheapest course. First is Nama Yuba. Yuba is made by using the thin layer that forms on the surface of boiling a pot of soy milk. When Yuba is fresh, it's called Nama Yuba. The taste is mild and has a delicate sweetness, along with the saltiness from the shoyu sauce and a fresh, smooth spiciness from fresh wasabi. A unique dish, particularly in terms of its texture and the way it feels when you take a bite. Second dish, is an egg tofu with mushrooms with a side of fried ears of rice, which is literally like a rice popcorn. Along with the dish, we were gifted Mr. Fuel's seasonal postcards. Next up is Shirayan's signature dish, Yudofu, which is boiled tofu. The dish is quite simple and is served with condiments such as dashi and spring onion. The texture of the tofu is very smooth and silky, but it won't break or fall apart when you cut it into smaller pieces. With this simple cooking method, you can taste the purest essence of tofu's natural flavor, which has a light and fresh taste of soybean. For our final savory dish, we have agenoshi tofu and rice with some pickles, dried young sardines, with Japanese peppercorn. I was most excited for this dish. It's a deep-fried tofu in a dashi-based broth with dried bonito flakes and spring onion. I couldn't wait to try this since this is one of my all-time favorite Japanese dishes. The tofu was crispy on the outside and smooth on the inside. It was sweeter and saltier than the yudofu we had earlier, which makes sense since it's deep fried and has a dashi based broth. Overall, it was very tasty. Last but not least, tofu ice cream with yasuishi, served with some brown honey. The tofu ice cream had a really natural taste of tofu, and the sweetness wasn't too strong either, so I think the brown honey brought out that sweetness a bit more. Overall, this kaiseki meal was worth the price. 
Shireyan is more affordable compared to other high-end Kaiseki meals. The restaurant setting, Riverside View delicious food, and friendly hospitality are great for the price. I would like to come back in different seasons. After lunch, I went back to the main area to try Arabica coffee. Arabica is a very famous coffee shop in Kyoto. You'll see their iconic coffee cups all over Arashiyama and Higashiyama, where it started and has become super popular and well-liked. I ordered a regular cafe latte and a Kyoto ice latte both for 550 yen. The regular latte was average in taste, but the Kyoto latte was very smooth and delicious because it contained condensed milk, giving it a flavor similar to Vietnamese coffee. If you have a sweet tooth and enjoy sugary coffee, I would recommend trying the Kyoto latte. However, if you prefer your coffee less sweet, I personally wouldn't line up for the queue, especially in holiday season. And also note that there's no seating inside for free. Now, let's go find some souvenirs in the main area. There are so many options, but one particular souvenir stands out from the rest as yet sushi. It's a traditional sweet made from a combination of glutinous rice flour mochi and sugar. And what makes it unique is the addition of cinnamon, also known as Nikki in Japanese. I don't know if you guys noticed, but it was actually the mochi on top of the tofu ice cream that we had at Shoren's dessert. Before we search for souvenirs, we found a pop-up Seikei shop by Tanzan beside the Arashiyama station. They've been brewing Seikei since 1882 using a traditional method that starts with growing rice and fertilizing the soil. They grow their own rice with organic methods and use pure water to make quality Seikei in the Arashiyama area. Although the Seikei pop-up might not be all year round, it's still one of the popular souvenirs from Japan. So if it's within your budget, I highly recommend getting an authentic Seikei as a souvenir as well. For Yatsuhashi, we decided to go with the one right in front of the Arashiyama station. There are so many options, including various flavors like matcha, black sesame, cherry blossoms, green apple mango, peach, chocolate banana, and more. Moreover, the filling inside isn't just limited to red bean paste, they also have chocolate, sweet flavored paste, and you can even get just the mochi without any filling. <laughs> While we were on our way to the famous bamboo forest, we stumbled upon this amazing restaurant called Ani. This place specializes in tofu and mochi, and they have a separate building for their cafe called Sukura Mochi Ani. We decided to stop by and try out their food. We ordered the Materashi Dango, which is a traditional Japanese rice dumpling smothered in a sweet soy glaze. It was served warm and was incredibly soft and delicious. We ate it on the first floor, but if you're looking for more wider variety Japanese sweets, there's also a tea room cafe on the second floor. After a short walk, we finally made it to the entrance of the famous bamboo forest. As you can see, there are a few food stalls here as well, but nothing really caught our attention. If you're planning a trip to Kyoto, you've probably already heard of this bamboo forest. It's a really popular tourist spot, so it can get pretty crowded. If you don't want to use Photoshop, make sure to go early in the morning. It's around 5.30, and we just got back to Kyoto Station to grab our bags. We're heading to the Mitsui Garden Hotel Kyoto Station, which is only a few minutes walk away from the station. Once we got our bags, the hotel lounge is actually free to use for guests. They offer coffee, fruit juices, and a few snacks, which is really convenient if you need a quick refreshment. If you're a fan of Japanese snacks, you might know that there was a popular brand called Call that used to be sold nationwide. However, in 2017, they decided to only sell in the Kansai region in the West, which means that you can't find them in Tokyo. This is the snack, but the original flavor is green. For dinner tonight, we decided to grab some ramen. We found this place in Kyoto Station on Isinu Level 10, which is part of the famous Kyoto Ramen Street. Ramen Tode is ramen from the Tokushima region and to order just buy your ticket from the machine. Broth was rich and flavorful, 
and the sukiyaki beef they put in the ramen was very tender as well and if you're feeling adventurous, you can even add some raw eggs to your ramen. They are on the counter, and you can eat as much as you want for free. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked today's video, please like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Also, make sure to check out my other videos as well. Hope this video was helpful. Ciao. See you next time.